So not the first time the French have had a complete mare with penalties in the last few weeks, is it? Football humour. Anyway, roll title. So Sergio Perez and Lando Norris were two drivers copping penalties for forcing drivers wide at Austria's Turn 3. Yes, Turn 3. That's what it is, not 4. That thing running up to the hairpin isn't a corner. Anyway, their crime was forcing another driver off the track. Now penalties and the FIA being inconsistent with them seem to combine like cheese on toast. And this is like the second video I've done on this before I did one with like Suzuka 2018 or something like that, but they'll apply a penalty to one driver in one instance and then the exact same thing will happen at a different race or the same race that they will ignore. And that's just counterproductive. And a lot of people seem to be annoyed by the fact Lando got a penalty for forcing Perez wide, despite the fact that Lando had got a decent chunk of his car in front of Perez and then started to take his natural line out of the corner. The debate then comes as to whether that is legal or not, given the fact that there is nowhere in the Formula 1 sporting regulations about overtaking, other than for red flags, safety cars and virtual safety cars. There are 12 references to the word overtaking in the technical regulations and they only cover those three things. The only thing I can find is Rule 27.3, the Bahrain Rule. Rule 27.3, drivers must make every reasonable effort to use the track at all times and may not deliberately leave the track without a justifiable reason. Drivers will be judged to have left the track if no part of the car remains in contact with it and, for the avoidance of doubt, any white lines defining the track edges are not considered to be part of the track, but the curbs are not. That sentence does not read well at all. Should a car leave the track, the driver may rejoin, however this may only be done so when it is safe to do so and without gaining any lasting advantage. At the absolute discretion of the race director, a driver may be given the opportunity to give back the whole of any advantage he gained by leaving the track. The Bahrain rule. But there is an appendix to this. It's Appendix L, which I guess contains the rule. I'll read it in full, but then I will highlight different bits and pieces that may apply. So overtaking, according to the circumstances, may be carried out on either the right or the left. A driver may not deliberately leave the track without justifiable reason. More than one change of direction to defend a position is not permitted. Any driver moving back towards the racing line, having earlier defended his position offline, should leave at least one car width between his own car and the edge of the track on the approach to the corner. However, manoeuvres liable to hinder other drivers, such as deliberate crowding of a car beyond the edge of the track or any other abnormal change of direction, are strictly prohibited. Any driver who appears guilty of any of the above offences will be reported to the stewards. But here's the kicker. Lando wasn't defending. Lando was making the move. There's nothing there about the attacking driver, only the defending driver. Unless the FIA considers the car in front to now be in a defending position. There's nothing on this from the FIA recently beyond forced him off. And it seems that the general consensus is that the car ahead has right of way as it were. If you have your nose in front as Lando did, you can have the racing line on the exit. It then becomes Checo's responsibility to back out. Where the issue then lies is it becomes at what point is it where it is less taking your line while having right of way and the other guy has to back out to you sent that guy off into the gravel. Considering that two years ago Verstappen had fired his car into turn two, sent Leclerc into the next postcode, and nothing was done. But that was two years ago. Hamilton and Albon last year, same corner as it so happens, although on that occasion it was an avoidable collision. And there are worries that Formula One has set a weird precedent with this ruling, with Christian Horner fearing a similar diving footballers problem where cars can deliberately send themselves wide in an effort to draw a penalty for the guy ahead. Horner said, you don't want the equivalent of footballers taking a dive. I think we need to avoid that. It's incredibly difficult because we talk about these things often and it's difficult for the race director. But I feel that maybe today the incidents we did see could have been lent to more racing incidents than being deserving of penalties. And race director Michael Mazzi later confirmed that Red Bull had been on the radio immediately following Lando's move and Ferrari had been on the radio when Perez was deemed to have done the same to Leclerc twice. It also doesn't help that on the exit of Turn 3 at Austria, there's no tarmac, just gravel. So this stuff doesn't really happen at most other tracks because you've got somewhere to go. 
And all of this comes after the FIA was deemed to have been too soft or too harsh on a couple of drivers in qualifying, after Bottas was accused of holding drivers up that pushed Vettel back to Alonso and ruined Alonso's chances of a fast lap. You've also got the total of 11 drivers who were under investigation following the crash at the end of the race, where Latifi and Mazepin were given two penalty points on their licenses for failing to slow down for the yellows. All of this now puts Perez on 10 penalty points for his incidents with Leclerc, and Norris will effectively have his wiped off as he'll be back on 8 for the British Grand Prix in about a fortnight's time. But will the pressure be mounting on Michael Mazzi? A man who was judged to have been brilliant in V8 supercars as their race director, but seeming to be more and more out of his depth after being thrust into the F1 race director role after the sudden death of Charlie Whiting. Does the FIA replace him, or does it keep going? But this is now where I hand things over to you. Are you in the camp of the drivers deserved it, or are you a it's just elbows out racing kind of guy or girl? Leave all thoughts in the comments section and get a discussion going. It is, after all, why this series exists. So if you think I've made some good points, give the video a thumb up, and for more reaction to Formula 1 news and behind the scenes gossip, subscribe with that bell on to get all the latest. Massive thanks as always go out to the good people of Patreon for their continued support. If you want to join them or just join in the Discord for a good natter, I'll leave all the links down in the description box for you. So until next time, I've been Aidan Mewood, have a great day wherever you live in the world and I'll see you all again very very soon. Goodbye.